This is section 6.5. Our second topic is permutations with indistinguishable objects. So quick reminder about permutations with repetition for distinct objects or objects that are distinguishable. Remember we said we have our permutations of a set of n objects um, is just n to the r. So how many words of length eight are there? Well, there are 26 distinct letters and we are going to choose a length of eight. So it would be 26 to the eight. Now, what we're going to be learning about now is what if we have objects that are indistinguishable? So we have how many different permutations of the letters in the word mathematics can be made? Assume all letters must be used. So why is this different? Well, because here I had 26 different objects. Here, these two are the same, and these two are the same, and I think I've got another pair in here somewhere. Oh, T and T. So we've got some pairs of letters and that's going to make things a little bit more complicated. So that's what makes this question different. So first thing we wanna do is take a look at how many total letters, which is 11. So we have 11 total letters and I've just listed two M's, two A's, two T's, and then one of everything else. Now what I wanna do is I wanna think about step by step. I have 11, excuse me, 11 different locations. So how many ways can I choose M to be in those 11 locations? Well, if there's 11 locations, I'm choosing two of them for M's. So now let's talk about A's. If I've already placed the two M's, I now have nine places left. So not 11 because I've already placed the two M's. So I have nine places left and I have to choose two of them for A's. And then I've got um, seven locations left because I've placed four letters already and two of them are T's. Now I've got five places left and I have to put just one H and then four places left for one E. Oops, <laughs> for one E and then three places left for one I, and then two places left for one C, and then one place left for the one S. So really what we're looking at is 11 choose two, nine choose two, seven choose two, five choose one, and so on. Now, if I multiply those out, because I would multiply them, because these are different events that are happening, I want you to notice that the 9 factorial, the 7 factorial, the 5 factorial, the 4 factorial, 3 factorial, and so on all cancel. So what I'm left with is in the numerator, 11 factorial, and in the denominator, I'm left with how many times each object occurred. So notice I've got three twos, three two factorials, and then one factorial five times. That is exactly what we want to do, is we want to use um, what is called a multinomial coefficient. So your textbook doesn't call it a multinomial coefficient until they ask you to prove it you know, at the end of the chapter in the really difficult questions. I'm not going to ask you to prove it, but essentially what I'm saying is if we have n objects where there are n1 indistinguishable objects of type 1, and two indistinguishable objects of type two and so on, then we can model that using this model where we have n factorial and then these are going to be how many objects are the same. Now it's not important for us to do the one factorial. So if you'll notice we had quite a few one factorials which we all know is one. I'm not a stickler about that so feel free to not write all of the one factorials. How I would write this here is I would say that I've got two M's, that I've got two A's. I was going to switch colors there. Okay, can you work with me here? Two A's and we've got two T's and the rest of them are all singletons. So what that tells me is I can take 11 factorial over two factorial for the M's and then 2 factorial for the A's and 2 factorial for the T's. And that's exactly what we just did on the last slide, but obviously this is 
a lot faster. So we're just going to use this solution. And another way that this might be written is 11, let me change colors because purple's not great, 11 and then 2 comma 2 comma 2. So you might also see it written like that. And the twos obviously represent the number of items that are identical. Let's take a look now at two practice together. And they are similar practice, but one of them is much harder than the other. So how many different strings can be made from the letters in abracadabra using all of the letters? So first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you know how many letters you're dealing with. So if I add this up, I find that N is 11. There's 11 total letters. Now, as we can see, we've got some duplicates. So I've got some A's, some B's, some C's, some D's, and some R's. So let's count up how many of each. There are five A's, two B's, one C, one D, and two R's. And that does in fact add up to 11. It's always a good idea to check that. So this question is the very straightforward one. How many different strings can be used if I'm using all of the letters? Well, that means I'm using 11 letters. So that's 11 factorial over 5 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Now keep in mind, I choose to not write the 1 factorials. Feel free to do that. I just don't like to do that. So I don't. 5, 2, 2. There's my solution. Now the second one, and again, you can choose to multiply this out and find the solution. Um, 83,160. Typically, I would just leave my solution like this, but obviously if I was taking a test, I would probably write it both ways just to make sure. Now, the second question's much more difficult. The second question says, what if we have a length of 10 or more? So if we have a length of 10 or more, that means I have a length of 10 or a length of 11. Now, we just determined the length of 11 was 11 factorial over 5 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. But length 10 is not as easy. And the reason that it's not as easy is it might be that I omit the A. It might be that I omit the B. It might be that I omit the C. It might be that I omit the D. Or it might be that I omit the R. So if I omit the A, then that means there are four of those left. So now I've got 10 factorial over 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. If I omit the B, now there's just 1 left. So I've got uh, 10 factorial over 5 factorial, and then 1 and 1 and 1, which I'm not going to write, 2 factorial. If I omit the C, I've got 10 factorial over 5 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. If I omit the D, I have the exact same thing. And if I omit the R, I have the same thing that I got for B. 10 factorial, 5 factorial, 2 factorial. So what would my final answer be? Well, again, I can either find what is this solution, what is this solution, what is this solution, or I can just, you know, write it um, symbolically like this. So my total solution is going to be 11 factorial over 5 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, plus I've got just one of these, so 10 factorial, 4 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. I've got two of these, so 2 times 10 factorial, 5 factorial, 2 factorial. And I've got two of these, 2 times 10 factorial over 5 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Now the last thing I could do is I know 2 factorial is just 2, so these would actually cancel and these would cancel. So I could write it a little bit more clean, cleanly, um, but I'm going to leave it just like this. 
um, and you get the idea that if I say would have done length of nine, then I would have had a lot more cases to look at. I could have taken two A's out or an A and a B or an A and a C or an A and a D or an A and an R. Or I could take two B's out or a B and a C and a B and a D and a B and an R. So you get the idea that these questions can become very complicated very quickly. Here's a question for you to try, and the first one's very straightforward, and the second two questions get increasingly more difficult. So you should be able to do A very easily. Um, I do want you to struggle through B and C a little bit before you just look at the solution, because that's how you learn. So press pause, try this question, and then press play to see how you did. So the first one's very straightforward. We've got the word sociological and we just want to permutate all of those letters. So it didn't say specifically, but if it doesn't say specifically, we can assume we want to permutate all of the letters in the word. So there are a total of, oops, wrong color. There are a total of 12 letters. So N is 12. And then we just want to count up any duplicates. So I've got one, two, three O's. I've got one, two C's. I have one, two I's. And I have one, two L's. So that adds up to nine. So I need to make sure that I do in fact have three singletons. So I've got an S, I've got a G, and I have an A. Those are my singletons. So for the first question, very straightforward, I have 12 letters and my repeats are the three factorial for O's the two factorial for the C's, the two factorial for the I's, and the two factorial for the L's. And it's not necessary to put one factorial, but again, if you do, that's okay. So again, hopefully that one was pretty straightforward um, for you to find the solution. And I'm not going to multiply that out. I'm just gonna leave it just like that. For the second question, it's saying how many arrangements have A and G adjacent? And I did go ahead and give you a hint on this one, so perhaps you used the hint or perhaps you didn't quite get what I was saying. What we're going to say is we're going to take A and G and we're going to fuse them together to make just one letter. So if I have A and G together, then that means that I have 11 letters. Because A and G, which were singletons, are now just one letter. So Again, this one's going to be pretty straightforward because now I have 11 letters, and if you'll notice, the two letters that I fused were singletons, so I don't have to worry about changing any of my denominators. So I'm still going to have three O's, I'm still going to have two C's, I'm still going to have two I's, and I'm still going to have two L's. Now, this would be a great solution, except that we know that there are two ways we're going to permutate a g and g a so i can either think of it as this is what i get when i have a g fused together and then if i did the exact same thing for g a it would be plus 11 factorial 3 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial 2 factorial because i have two of them because this would be what happens when it's g a or I can think about the fact that I have a permutation of two objects and I need to use both of them. So let me just get rid of this, which means I can also take this just times two because that's a permutation of two choose two. So it's two factorial over two minus two factorial, which is zero. So two. So here's my solution. And again, if you really want to reduce that even further, I could call that 11 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial. Now, the last question, obviously, is the hardest. 
says, how many arrangements are all of the vowels adjacent? So if you'll recall, vowels are A, E, I, O, U. So I have O, which is three. Let me not change colors all of a sudden. So O is three and I is two and we had one A. So I have six vowels. And if I had 12 total letters, that means I have six consonants. So if I said all of these vowels are just one word, I'm sorry, are just one letter, those are now one letter, that means I have a total of seven letters. So I have seven letters, and in those consonants, the repeats that I have are two Cs, let me use the same coloring system, two C's and I have two L's. So again, that takes care of part of it. That takes care of the fact that I have arranged this giant letter with the other six letters. So I've taken all seven letters, but remember that first letter, just as we did here and we said AG or GA, we have to think about that in the same way using the six vowels. So how many vowels do I have? I have six vowels and I'm going to, again, think about the repeats that I have in those vowels. So I have three O's and I have two I's. And so that's going to give me my solution I think I switched colors out of nowhere. Six factorial. So again, this represents the entire word, but we multiply it by this value, which represents the different ways that the one letter that contains all of the vowels might be distributed. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at distributing objects into boxes. And so we're going to basically break it down into four cases, whether things are distinguishable or indistinguishable. So it's going to be a very good review of what we've just talked about, as well as a little bit more uh, new information.